This video is sponsored by LD Player, but we are playing Precon today, so you guys don't have to be scared. So I've been a Princess Connect content creator for over a year now. And so over this year, and even before then, I've done a lot of research. I've done a lot of investigations into the CN servers, into the JP servers. I have most certainly looked at a lot of the different systems that are upcoming, especially the unique equipment, which we just got yesterday. But for some freaking reason, I can still make a big, big mistake, such as leaving my pack without a unique equipment why 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 am i the way i am like seriously i spent months hyping this up and my pecrin doesn't get her ue like oh <laughs> hi welcome back to another princess connect video my name is lace and today we're going to be talking about unique equipment and a couple of the different things that are floating around such as uh who we should actually go for what i actually freaking did because as you guys could see my big, big blunder over here that is the Pecrin, the UE-less Pecrin. Like, I can't, I can't stop, like, freaking cringing when I look at this. We'll talk about that. We'll also talk about what I'm predicting or seeing in terms of, like, the clan battle UEs. How we can patch our mistakes up and, like, the biggest mistake to not make, essentially. And so, my dudes, with that being said... Welcome to the era of unique equipment. And if you guys are new here or you don't know what UEs are, go find a guide on my channel. I am sure there are three of them. Somehow I made the same guide like four times or something, maybe even six times. I don't know. But here we have the unique equipment princess sword for old mate Pecrin. And so when we get this bad boy, we are going to get an enhanced skill one. Lunchtime plus increase to magic defense. We get a massive boost to HP recovery. It was not this much before. But the real hero of this skill is the barrier. And that's just... Oh man, it's so freaking tragic. And so that's kind of a UE in summary. Before we go anywhere, I want to talk about the, the mistake to not make. And that mistake is to, if I come over to another character, my freaking Kurumi, who I should not have UE'd. So you guys see this button over here, uncap, and you guys will see that this is the shard currency. Okay, this is the shard fragment. These guys are what you're gonna be using to level up your UEs. And especially in the early levels, like from 50, it goes to 70. So if I hit uncap over here, you can see it's going from 30 up to 50, and then it'll go from 50 to 70, 70 to 90 to 110 to 130. Like these are all really significant upgrades to a certain few units. Kurumi is certainly one of them. If I had the fragments, I would juice her up to 130 or 110, whatever the cap is right now, if I could. Actually, you know what? I wouldn't do that because because I would do that for my Pecorin. Yeah, guys, yes, I'm gonna stay salty. Anyway, so the mistake itself is that a lot of people are gonna see like, oh man, we can combine these fragments into a full heart container. And so my dudes, look, look at this icon. You do not want to fuse this into this one over here. This, this transaction does not exist to you guys. The sheer amount of fragments and shards that we're actually going to need to upgrade all of these characters don't do it, my guys. And so that was really just a long way to say, don't fuse these fragments together to make this heart container thing. To obtain your unique equipment, only use the princess hearts or heart containers that you get from the Lunar Tower or some of the other events, not the ones that are crafted from shards. You need the shards. I promise you guys, you guys definitely need them. I, I need them too, man. So yeah, Crunchyroll, two times when, two times Sanctum Survey, please. <laughs> oh God. All right, so to kick things off, let me go through the logic in how I ended up in this situation with a UE-less Pekarin. First of all, in my mind, I was like, oh, Kurumi, Kurumi OP. Kurumi must have her UE first. And so I believe I had about 20 hearts. I slammed on the Kurumi UE and I called it a day. After that, all I had to do was juice it up to level 30 using the refinement things that we already use right now. And then I got a ping. I got a ping from Discord. And Discord was like, all right, guys, we're going to need UE on Hiori. As you can see, we have the purple floaty icon there. We're also going to be using the UE on a couple of other key characters, such as Kokoro. And so there goes number three out of five. After Little Miss Kokoro, we already know it's freaking Ray next. It is mother effing Ray. And so as you can see, Ray is finally, well, she's not really in her glory state, but she is most certainly going to be used very, very soon. And so last of all, there was a fourth CB character that it needed to go on. And it was mother effing Kiaru. Look guys, this this UE is, is decent. Let, let me let me hover it. It's it's decent, right? She gets a magical defense down on her skill one. It, it shreds Miyako. Like, I don't know what else I can say. She is also going to see use in the upcoming CB. So again, to summarize, Hiyori, Rei, Kokoro, Kiaru. These four characters. And so you are left with one if you have been clearing every Lunar Tower since then. If you are CB focused, then I would highly recommend using those four UEs on those four characters. And then for your last UE, you dump it on the Pecrin. 
you give Pekarin her princess sword. The thing about Pekarin is that with the UE, she becomes very, very hard to kill with this guy over here. Not only because the heal is stronger now, but she is also getting a damage barrier. This damage barrier absorbs the damage in which you get heals from this. So uh, technically speaking, she is also healing herself for 2610. And so not only is she pretty much unkillable in PvP, but she is also really hard to kill in PvE as well. And so with that being said, let's have a talk about Kurumi over here. Kurumi is good. Kurumi is fantastic. She gives everybody a physical defense. This just makes your stalls even more stally. And on top of that, she also recovers all allies TP by 50, very much like the Maho, right? However, it's not really like, it's not really game breaking, if you know what I mean. If there was anywhere that the Kurumi is really, really going to annoy you, it's actually not going to be in Battle Arena. UE Kurumi actually performs the best when it's in Princess Arena. You come up against a stall team, it's got this bad bitch in it, and like, you can't kill anything. She's freaking like constantly buffing them, like buff, 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 buff again, buff again, and then nobody on your team dies, they're getting more TP, and it just, it really, really makes a lot of blind hits like fail. So my guys, yes, Kurumi is actually really freaking good, but Pekarin is just significantly, significantly better. I would argue that it's like a meta shift. It's not on the scale of like the Halloween Shinobu or like the Ilya, but if there was ever anyone that was kind of even close to being on par with them, but at a tank capacity, this was it. And so my guys, enjoy your Pekarins, enjoy your UE Pekarins, because I cannot, so do it for me. So guys, let's take a quick break to talk about our sponsor, LD Player. LD Player is a fast modern emulator that will meet all of your mobile gaming and app needs. Like, look at it go. It's got features like multi-instancing, side-loading APKs, we've got the sync operations, high frame rate mode for a lot of games a lot of different features and they are constantly improving on them. For me personally, I currently use LD Player for Revive Witch. Unfortunately, this is a new instance, so you guys can't see it. And on top of that, I do think that it is the best emulator for punishing Grey Raven. And on top on top of that, as you guys can see, I am using it for Precon now. And so if you guys would like to give LD Player a shot, head on down to the description or the pinned comment below and go ahead and click the link. Otherwise, thank you again to LD Player for the sponsorship and let's get back to the video. And with that being said, I want to run through a couple of arena comps because yeah, defense just got a lot more interesting and really freaking cringe. It's it's gonna hurt now. All right, my guys, we are in the arena rankings. And so I just wanted to show you guys what the top 100 are kind of looking at. I'll also show you guys what I'm running, but like really, it's it's really not that great. And so the first thing that you're gonna notice is that most people in arena, that Nozomi is going to stay non ue would because again, there is gonna be a preference for that Pekarin. However, it looks like the third place Mad Lad has ue the Nozomi. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how he's getting away with it. <laughs> but here we go. This is the start of the Pekarin. We have the Pekarin UE over here. And so this kind of comp over here, I must say I have not really encountered it yet before. I might not be seeing the logic, but like you got the Lima over here. Lima definitely helps your Tsumugi as well as your Ninon. However, when you pair a tank with the Lima, typically it's going to be the Nozomi because the Nozomi can actually get up closer to the front line and stun everybody. So unfortunately, this comp over here, like it's making use of it. Like Monica does the AoE. Actually, it's a whole bunch of cleave on defense, which is really cool. But the UE Pekarin herself, she unfortunately can't make use of the Lima positioning as much as like a Nozomi. All right, and so moving through, we have a lot of Halloween Shinobus on defense. We've got another Pekrin with UE over here. And so this is certainly a comp that I would be running if I had the Pekrin UE. This comp is actually pretty cool because we've got the Kurumi with the UE and the Pekrin with the UE. And so it does give a whole bunch of survivability to the entire team. And on top of that, it's got the Jun. So Jun is definitely known for like her single target heals, like early game Shizuru, if you guys do remember that. Shizuru was just like so incredibly annoying but unfortunately she has fallen off these days and so with these single target heals over here backed up by the Kurumi it's going to be very very hard to break this and on top of that you've got the Tsumuki that is scrambling everybody and then the Halloween Shinobu that is going to be cleaving so again this is probably one of the comps that I would be using one of the only changes that I would make is probably the Jun up to a Miyako instead personally I'm just really a massive fan of Miyako but like Miyako is starting to really really die now and so if I was to use a Miyako I would definitely would need to like put in some kind of anti-mage like a Tamaki or Arisa. Either that or it's going to be the Miyako with the Kuka as well. So like these guys down here. So coming down, coming down, it doesn't look like there are too many more of these Pekarins except, oh, hello. And so what we do have over here is kind of like a variant of the one above over here. Very similar kind of ideas. You got the Tsumugi to scramble, but you also got the Halloween Shinobu to do the cleave. No UE Pekarin, but we do have the Miyako-Kuka combo. And so I think that this could be quite solid. All right, moving down, moving down. So this 
this one over here, this, it feels a little bit dangerous. Let me put it that way. There's certainly like anti-mage as well as anti-archer with this Halloween Miyako over here. However, generally speaking, if there is a Halloween Miyako, the only thing that you need to do to counter it is put it in a Maho and then don't use like your H Misaki or like your Kyoka. Generally speaking, your Maho at like 11-4 or whatever will tank two to three hits from this, this bad girl over here. So moving through, as you guys can see, no UEs on the Nozomis, no UE on the Nozomi. Then we got this guy over here, which I think is also another great configuration. I think you guys can kind of tell by now, right? I'm a really massive fan of the Tsumugi and the Halloween Shinobu combo. They just really set you up to make you really angry. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So in this one, again, massive amounts of heal. We've got a taunt from Nozomi. That is something that I did forget to talk about. I did look at it and forget to talk about it. So that was just a little bit of criticism for this one over here. Like there's no taunt. There is no Nozomi or Kuka. It is like straight healing. And that's why I'm not the biggest fan of this one. Like for me, the taunts always screw me up. But with that being said, I think the heals in this are just going to be utterly ridiculous. And so back to these ones down here, like Nozomi is not out of meta. Nozomi is most certainly really, really useful still. And the fact of the matter is that right now, defense comps are very front heavy. So as you can see, you got the Pekarin, the Tsumugi, the Kurumi, and then you got the Nozomi AOE healing all of them. On top of that, if we have a look at the next one, same, same scenario. We've got the Shizuru, so much single target heals in this one as well. However, for me, I see rank 15. I don't see any like offensive capabilities. So I'm thinking like this one's probably the easiest one to bust out of all of them. Because if there's virtually no damage, all you have to do is take a tank and then take a whole bunch of damage as well. And so if it was me trying to bust this one, I see the Maho position 2 is compromised for physical. I'd probably take something like a Miyako or a Nozomi on the front line, one single tank, and then position 2 either a Monica just purely for her buff. And so if we do take the Monica, then three mages after that to form your classical mage melt. But if not the classical mage melt and you're feeling a little bougie like I am right now, after your first tank, I would actually try stack up four mages. So I'm talking like your Akari. I'm talking your Skiaru for the Shred. And then you can definitely use your Kiaru as well as your Kyoka. Halloween Misaki for me, like I would probably slot that in. But that's just because I think Halloween Misaki is pretty funny. And she's just going to screw up this Pekarin over here. But unfortunately, remember the Pekarin, she has the shield. And shields do negate CC if no damage is taken. Anyway, let's keep moving through. So we've got a very, very classical comp over here. A couple more. We've got an interesting one over here. However, it doesn't feature a UE. But I do see 17 and 19 that are still using the Pekrin as well as Nozomi combo. So again, guys, Nozomi is most certainly still in meta. I just think that Jun may have fallen out of meta, but that could definitely vary with the bracket. we got another one over here. This is pretty interesting. This one is almost purely focusing on stalling as well as hitting your backline. We've got the Halloween Miyako over here. And so this one is kind of okay. Like I'm starting to think physical comps for this, but yeah, moving through, you guys can see like the freaking Pekrins are littered everywhere. We've got another one over here. we got another one over here. We've got a couple of Nozomi UEs at is actually really freaking ballsy because I don't know where they're getting those shards from. We've got a couple more here. Yeah, honestly, it's it's pretty insane because there are a lot less Miyakos than there are like from before. And so yeah, again, guys, welcome to the era of Pekarin UE. And so the next thing I do want to talk about is the Sanctum survey. Like, uh, my God, the drop rates on these things are like, uh, they make me freaking cringe so hard. But essentially, if you are in like a top 10 or potentially a top 25 clan, then you might be refreshing the attempts of this level two one once a day. I'm pretty sure the drop rates on the level two is supposed to be 50% each time and 30% for these ones on level one. But today when this patch dropped, I got none from the level one and I got one from the level two having refreshed once as well. So yeah, I am a... Uh... I'm relatively unlucky. Let's put it that way. But yeah, you guys need to go check with your clans and see what they want from you. They might ask you to refresh. In my opinion, it's not really like that necessary. Like they're looking to max out the Rei UE as well as the Hiori UE. Like the Hiori one I get, but the Rei UE, I'm kind of like, uh, is it really that good? Anyway, that's just my own opinion. The top 10 clans certainly know what they're doing. And by now, most of your clan leaders will also know what they're doing as well. And so with that being said, let's move on. All right, and so in terms of Princess Arena, I must say that like, I am like way worse at Princess Arena. I just wanted to quickly show you guys the defenses I'm running. So as you can see, I am definitely doing the Lima Nozomi combo. It actually is quite annoying, especially for like the front loaded comps. And then on top of that, I've got a massive cleave threat in the Saren boosting up the Halloween Shinobu, but Saren also does AOE 
AoE damage. Definitely no UE on the Saren. And then we got the Mitski as well, doing the Shred as well as the AoE UB. I think this is a decent comp. I don't think it's the best comp. I think it's actually quite easily exploitable. A magic based comp will probably tear this one apart. So yeah, anyway, moving on. Because unfortunately, not all of our teams can be good in Princess Arena. All right, and so this is my next comp. We got the Miyako Kuka combo, as we already seen. It's very, very popular for a good reason. And then what I have here is a Tsumuki, Yukari, and Maho combo. This is probably one of like the more annoying ones because the Tsumuki is like constantly you being just so much freaking disruption. It's got a lot of store potential. But to be honest, ideally, this Maho would be a Halloween Shinobu instead, but Halloween Shinobu can't be everywhere. Me personally, I am way over store comps. I think store comps just aren't really that strong anymore. I think that the store comps with like some level of threat, so stuff like this, they, these just tend to work better in my opinion. Anyway, so that's that one over there. And so welcome to the Kurumi comp. And so as you can see, a lot of single target heal maybe one day for my Pekarin. I definitely could swap out the Pekarin for the Shizuru, but like hopefully this will actually give an insane amount of survival ability. That actually might be a pretty good idea because like the Shizuru can heal the Jun as well considering the Jun is going to be taking like the majority of the damage. So we've got the Misato healing position one. We've got the Shizuru also healing the single target heal is very very strong. Yeah this is probably the comp that I should be running not the Pekarin unfortunately. But if I had the Pekarin ah. Uh... Ah, uh, yeah, okay, it's gonna be this for now. All right. <laughs> anyway, this is certainly a comp that I like. It doesn't have any taunt, but it does have the threat of the Halloween Miyako hitting the back line. And so in a way, it is kind of building in the anti-mage, the anti-archer kind of thing. But yeah, that's kind of it for my PA comps. Somehow we got to talking about Arena. If we come back to the UE characters, I'm gonna go on to Hiyori. And Hiyori, you're gonna see, she is going to be doing a whole bunch of AoE damage. She is certainly not gonna see the massive use like Halloween Shinobu or the Ninons. But if you guys are familiar with PCRD, fans like you will see this UE Hiyori pop up sometimes. It's just really useful in like hunting down those frontliners like I'm talking like the Tamakis, I'm talking like the Tsumugis. Hopefully it does work out but again like they're not overly common but you will see some. Again, in terms of the Kiaru, I think she is probably going to feature in my Mage Melt again. And a massive reason for Kiaru UE is because she stands in front of the Maho. And so what that means is that I can have the Maho and then I can have the Skiaru, Kiaru, Akari, and then Tank. And so if I have that Tank as a Kuka or a Nozomi, more generally gonna be like a, a Kuka, I can actually cover off a lot of the anti-mage countermeasures. We've got the Hello Miyako going into the back for the Maho, and then the Tamaki and the Arisa getting like into the Kuka, although the Kuka, she might die a little bit fast. So that's that one for Kiaru. Um, otherwise, we've got the Rei, who probably isn't going to see much use. She's just going to be a shredder. Saren, do not touch her. Yui, do not touch her. Nozomi Yui, Nozomi herself, base is really good, but don't touch her Yui. And then Kokoro, very, very unlikely to see any play in Arena, but probably will be in CB. All right, I don't know how I managed to ramble on for so long. Oh my God. But yeah, that's it, guys. Remember, do your Pekrins. Don't do your freaking Kurumis. Unfortunately, I have gone casual for CB and so this is where I am at now. And so with that being said, let's start talking about how you guys did with your UEs. Did you slam them onto the right characters or did you forget like me and you upgraded your freaking Kurumi? Like guys, don't get me wrong, Kurumi is not bad at all. It's just that Pekrin is so freaking awesome, okay? That's, that's really it. And so my dudes, do let me know who you did equip your UEs on, who you did use your shards on. And if you guys would be so kind to let me know down in the comments below and I would really appreciate that because it means you made it until the end of the video and so thank you guys so much. But my my pre-con gang, you already know what it is. Like, subscribe, follow. And as our happy-go-lucky female protagonist once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.